Long snapper appreciation. Preaching the gospel of the long snapper, the special teamers, the long forgotten members, but maybe the most important members of NFL football rosters. Our guest today, very special guest, Tabor Pepper, the long snapper of the San Francisco 49ers. Get into his journey into the NFL and what it takes to be a professional long snapper. Coming up on today's Locked On 49ers. You are Locked On 49ers, your daily San Francisco 49ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On 49ers, Brian Peacock and Eric Crocker with you as always at BD Peacock at Eric underscore Crocker. Thanks for making Locked On 49ers your first listen here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and a very special guest today at Tabor Snapping on Twitter. Tabor Pepper, the long snapper of the San Francisco 49ers. Tabor, I got to start with the question that everybody wants to know. Do you ever get arm fatigue from too much long <laughs> snapping or maybe changing up in the camp? What a good meme that became. I love that BA posted about that. Yeah, yeah. It's fantastic stuff, man. It, like, it, it really gives you the vibe. Like you guys, it, it really feels like this, and it feels like it's been this way for a while, that you guys have a really good locker room with the 49ers. Oh, it's, yeah. it, it's unbelievable. It's one of the best I've been in. And um, I think my time at Michigan State, like that locker room was amazing, and we were able to accomplish really, really great things. And uh, especially last season as we – battled through the adversity of the the first you know 10 games of the season it was pretty up and down but as we got into the playoffs it I felt the same way that I felt when I was in in it with uh the guys back at Michigan State because every team th there's a special feeling you get when you're starting to stack stack wins and stack you know kind of you know meaningful things together so yeah I mean the locker room is you can't beat it how how much of a help do you think that is when you are going through some of the adversities 49ers went through last season, starting off three and five, there's that big elephant in the room with the quarterback situation and still everyone in that locker room having to kind of stay together, tight knit and focus on what the goal was, which was going to the playoffs. But at one point it didn't look like it was something that was really going to happen. So how did y'all stay together? Was there one person that was like, hey, let's bring it up. Did you have a team meeting or was it just our right, one game at a time and eventually we'll get there? I think um, having that kind of core of guys that was on the team uh, in 2019, you know, I wasn't a part of that that Super Bowl run, but um, having guys from that, that team, having guys like Trent Williams um, and kind of just guys that we've accumulated over the, the past couple of years. Um, there was a standard that these, these guys know we could all reach. And it was like, let's get it going. Um, we know how good we are. It's no secret. Um, let's just come together and just finish these games out. Uh, that's kind of basically what it came down to. There was no like real come to Jesus moment, but um, I think around that Chicago game is when things started to pick up uh, really well. And I think that's really what from the organizationally on from the top down, that just the type of people and players that the 49ers have brought in, you know, the character is a big part of that. And, and I think that helps you write the ship, you know, without any huge moments. That That's what it seems like from the outside looking in. And, and you're part of that. I'm sure they targeted you and wanted you to, to come in and, and, and stick with the 49ers because of your character as well as your long snapping ability. And I know it was a long path. For you, uh, for for those listening to this podcast or, or watching on YouTube, go to at Tabor Snapping on Twitter. His pin tweet uh, was like twenty different tryouts. You, in fact, you 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 tried out for the 49ers like three different times, right? Yeah, uh, in twenty eighteen was the first time I worked out for these guys, and uh, it was kind of the start of their long snapper uh, carousel that was going on for yeah. the 20, 2018, 2019 season. Um, it's funny, like. I, we can kind of dive into that story a little bit. That was probably that week after that workout was probably one of my darkest times as a free agent. Um, I'll try to keep a long story short. They brought in five of us. There were like two rookies. And then it was me, Colin Holba who got drafted by the Steelers and then John Kondo who played forever for the, the Raiders. Um, we all worked out. 
right after the workout, we ate lunch. They sent the two rookies home and then they kind of just had us there. They're like, we need to make a decision. We got to get you some physicals, whatnot. So <laughs> I remember that was the longest I had to wait for a physical. I think we were all in there for like three or four hours, just sitting at this doctor's office. Um, oh, got the physical. <laughs> oh God, it's miserable. So we did the, we did the physical and then they took us back to the facility. We're just chilling there. And I don't even know what time it was, but it was like, uh, we haven't made a decision yet, guys. We're just going to send you all home. And it was like, first of all, that was just like, I'd never had that happen before. I was like, dang. Okay. So we all get home. I think it was the next day or the the day after that I'm checking Twitter. And when I was a, a free agent, um, I would just search the term long snapper and refresh all day to see, you know, who's getting workouts, who got hurt, who had a bad game, good game, whatnot. And, um, I saw that what happened first. So I saw that they signed Colin Holba. No. Yes. They signed Colin, I think. And I was like pretty discouraged, whatever. And then not even 10 minutes later, I refresh it and the Falcons had signed John Condo and I hadn't heard from anybody. And I'm just like that. I was so crushed when I saw like, it was us three that were like the final guys at that workout. And then within two days, they're both signed. And it's like, my God, like in that 2018 season, I had five workouts in the fall. And I think three of them, John Condo was at. And so I I got to the point where I was like, even though I wasn't getting picked up, I was like, I'm getting invited to these workouts with a guy who's played 12 years. I got to be doing something right if I'm in that guy's company. And then when that happened, that just like dagger in the heart twisted it pulled it out stabbed it again like that that night like i think my wife and i like cried on the couch for like 30 minutes like it it was tough um luckily i had a workout with with the giants later they they offered me a futures deal so that's kind of when i started to like stick on a team kind of really develop was that that next spring after that 2018 season I did want to ask you because, you know, I understand how important special teams is. I tell Peacock all the time, I got cut from the New York Jets because I just sucked at special teams and I had no idea why. But how how do you get into long snapping? I look back, you know, going back to Michigan State, that was something that you did. I remember being at a Division II school and our college, like, they signed someone specifically for your long snap. And I'm like, long snapping? Like, dude, I can long snap. You know, that's what I'm thinking. But, you know, what, like, made you say to yourself, you know what? I'm going to be a long snapper. I'm going to be the best long snapper that I can be. And then after you go through some of these uh, situations where you're on a team, not on a team, on a team, not on a team, uh, not playing at all in 2018, how hard was it to, one, stick to a team and really kind of get back into the flow of things? Um, So starting off, I sixth grade, my dad taught me to just snap the ball with two hands because that was like the very first time we ran a punt play. I uh, was in sixth grade and then in eighth grade, the coach was like, hey, whoever wants to be a long snapper, come over to this side of the field. There were like 10 guys out of, I don't know, 80 maybe. <clears throat> and um, all those guys were trying to do it one handed, like a center snap. I was the only one with two hands just from the off thing my dad taught me in sixth grade. <laughs> uh, the coach went down the line and he goes, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. Pepper, you're hired. And literally like that was the start of it. Uh, my mom signed me up for a snapping camp. I liked it. So I kept going. Wow. Um, and then, so my dad played college football at Illinois, um, in 89 and 90. And so growing up, I just, uh, I'm going to play college football. Like that's what my dad did. Oh, duh. Well, I get to 10th grade and I'm fourth string wide receiver, third string defensive end. And I like, I can't even remember what I was doing, but I like really thought, I don't even know if I was at practice. I thought about, I was like, how the hell am I supposed to, to play in college if I can't even see the field as a, a sophomore in high school? I'm like, God, this is going to be tough. So I was the starting long snapper and I was already going to these camps and they talked about recruiting and stuff. I was like, I guess I'll just dive into this. Um, and I was right, ranked probably like 25th when I started in the country. And then, cause there weren't a ton of guys. And then um, by the end of my senior year, I was fifth in the country and I, I probably would have been top three um, if I had just weighed more. But my senior year, I was like six four, 165 pounds. Like <laughs> a oh, stiff wow. breeze could have blown me over. I even look at my my freshman year in college, and I was 185 pounds. I'll watch the uh, Buffalo Wild Wings Bowl that I played in, and I'm like, how the hell did the trainers allow them to play me? Like, again, it looks like 
like a water boy could have knocked me out. Um, so yeah, that's kind of when I really leaned into it. Um, I can't remember the second part of your, of your question, kind of just the, the, the journey of, of like sticking with it. Uh, kind of yeah, like, like because pro, it's, yeah. it's not a position where, you know, you have four or five of these guys on yeah. a team or more. So how do you find your way to be able to stick into the NFL playing that position? So I won't get into as much of, of like my journey of like workouts and stuff. But I, one thing I, I kind of was really thinking about last summer was it is you, like you said, there's not two, three, four long snappers on a roster. Like if you're super lucky as a long snapper, like maybe two teams in the entire league will carry a guy on practice squad, maybe. Um, and that's so like, you're so lucky if you get that opportunity because because each team only has one guy throughout the season, for example, the only times you'll get reps in front of a coach really is in OTAs and camp. If you're a camp body or if you're competing. So, but then, then if you're splitting time, your punt period is usually only like 10 minutes long in the summer. Okay. So we'll say you get about one rep a minute, but then you're splitting it with the starter so you get five full reps with a full line with guards, tackles, wings, and all that stuff. Like that is not a lot of time, you know, receivers get how many routes a day, whether they're first string or fourth string, you have a lot more like indie periods with snapping, like the, the biggest hurdle to jump from college, especially college to NFL now is your ability to block anybody who's even sniffing an NFL workout you better be able to snap duh like it better be pretty consistent it better be pretty fast accurate whatnot like that shouldn't even be a question at that point it's can you snap and then block because any special teams coach will tell you the hardest job on any punt team is a long snapper like the guards are the guards in punt are literally standing up like hand here ready to take that first kick slide and, and post for you. They see, they see the guy with their eyes the whole time. Like there might be a twist, but it's simple math. If like the four becomes three, three, becomes whatever, that's easy. Cause you can see it the whole time. I'm looking at the punter throwing, basically throwing my torso through my legs. And then I have to pick my torso up and then I might get maybe half of a second to see who was in front of me, where he decided to go. And then again, like you better hope you can see like an offset of the guy opposite of where you're supposed to go. Because if he's offset a certain way, he might be picking you and the guy you're supposed to have is loop. Like you have that much time to make a decision because I'm looking back at the punter at the start of it. And I, I'm not you know, world's smallest violin. Like I, I can do it now, but it is so hard to get the reps to develop into an NFL snapper. And hopefully I'm the guy for 10 years. That means that there's one kid who's never going to have a shot at the Niners. So, I mean, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, that's unbelievable. I have so many questions about the intricacies of the position. You start talking about some of those there. Uh, it's fascinating to me and a lot more difficult than people like young croc think we I'll just chuck the ball between my legs. That'll be super easy. There's a lot that goes into this uh, more with Tabor pepper 49ers long snapper coming up, but I got to let the folks out there know about Dave. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and you can't change the past, but what if you could get a little help from your future self? Maybe you'd ask to borrow a little cash. Now you can with Dave. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a gift, or catch up on those bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app and get financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch, need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's Dave, D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. Thanks again, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers your first listen. Which NFL stars move the betting line the most? Starting this week, Locked On gives you the 50 most valuable players in the NFL from the odds makers at Bet Online. Started Monday through the week, 10 
per day through the top 50 NFL line movers on the Locked On YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, real quick, Peacock. I did have yeah. one more question for Tabor. Okay. Right, and knowing you, you touched on not really getting a whole lot of snaps and opportunities, how much pressure was on every one of those snaps in OTAs or in training camp? Because now it's like, I don't have many reps. I almost have to be perfect. Dude, yeah, pressure has to be like the biggest part of all of it, right? Once you prove and practice that you can snap like in the game, like on the line, because, you know, the kicker's got to be thinking about it. The holder's got to be thinking about it. The long snapper, the pressure going on for all three of those guys to get everything right has to be insane. Yeah, and OTAs in camp, it's to me, I've gotten to the point, you know, I've really only read one sports psychology book, and that was right before I went to Michigan State. And honestly, it's kind of all I needed because of how like succinct it was and like very clear. Um, now, for the most part, pressure is what you make it for me, at least. Um, so in those times, I could feel, you know, you can feel the pressure, but there's a certain amount you can block out and you can try to reframe it as. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of pressure to perform right now because I want to earn a spot. But this is my time to learn and develop, and I can go into this rep thinking, how can I get better here? Two reps ago, I didn't see that my guy was a little bit wider than normal, so like he was kind of just leaving me alone, so I could need to shift my eyes to the other side. Just like trying to build it up as like a learning experience for me was kind of how I dealt with that. And now that I'm on like a team consistently, now I try to like build up pressure and practice like. Um, I'm not going to say exactly what I do because it's a little embarrassing, but like I have, I like, I can't even allude to it or else it's like very obvious. I have ways I think to you build have up. to kind of tell us. I think you kind of, I don't think I care. I, I, I might get clowned up, but I, I have a way to like build artificial pressure in my mind. Um, that's pretty effective. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm able to do that. And that's kind of how I'm able to like practice that during practice. And then also, Robbie and I have a really, really good relationship, but he's, um, I'm able to, this is separate from my other way to build pressure, but the other way that I can build some artificial pressure during practice is like, I know how much of a perfectionist he is and he's like taking me under his wing. And so I never, I never want to be a reason why Robbie misses a kick. So that's like my, another way that I can like build up pressure is because I respect the hell out of him. He's one of the best to ever do it. And uh, I don't want to get in the way. I want to facilitate. I don't want to distract. So that's another way that I do it. Kind of like an offensive lineman, right? If you don't want anyone to ever notice the long snapper unless you're yeah. down making a tackle, you know, of the, yeah. of the returner or something like that. Do you put a, a do you put a radar gun on your snaps? Is that something they track during during workouts? Is it something like where you're trying to get like a, an exact speed because maybe you don't want it to go too fast because you don't want it to be hard to catch, but you want some velocity on it, right? Yeah, the way I did it um, in high school was like whatever the physics formula is. It's like times by distance equals speed or whatever. So it's 15 yards or 14 yards, whatever your coach decides. And then it's the hand timer. So uh, my average snap is probably like 0.65 seconds for about 14 yards. Um, so whatever that equation is, I think it comes out to like almost like 38 miles per hour or something. Um but yeah, normally it's just by time. So um, typically you're not really going to see an NFL snapper snap faster than a 0.75. Um, you'll almost never see anybody snap below a 6.0. I think the only guy who came close for a long time was Nick Sundberg with the uh, Washington um, for a long time. He recently retired. He was probably one of the fastest snappers in the league. But there, there is a happy balance. Like you said, um, you don't want it to be so fast that you're like breaking your punter's fingers or whatever. Um, some guys like a fastball. Some guys like a ball at their chest. Whereas like when you traditionally hear like long snapping, there's like a little two foot by two foot box on the hip. Uh, some guys like a high. Some guys like it a little bit lower. So there's like a happy medium for everybody. And um, I have probably a faster snap than most of the league. And I equate that to because I was so skinny in high school, 
my form had to be absolutely perfect to even have a hope of getting the ball back 15 yards. Cause I, I wasn't like, again, I was like a, a bean, like a string bean. Now I have a little bit of muscle on me. Um, so having that perfect form helped and I had a fast snap in high school. And then when I got to college and added like, uh, 40, 50 pounds on my frame, then it was like, like a laser beam um and that's carried over because my form had to change from college to the to nfl to help block i gotta talk about just how like i don't want to see the best athletes on the field tabor but i think maybe underrated how good of an athlete a long snapper has to be right so you gotta snap with velocity we've talked about some of these things pinpoint accuracy then block some combination of you know i don't know a 300 pound defensive lineman maybe there's a db you know in the gap or something coming so in uh then have the athleticism get down the field cover a punt tackle somebody in space and you know let's be honest probably pure hands right you you handle the ball and you got to be that emergency tight end in, in some situations as well right so does that cover all of it you know and just the brass balls of holding up under pressure i mean it's pretty remarkable what you have to do I don't know how Kyle would react if I floated the backup tight end thing, but <laughs> you don't get any reps. I think I think he'd tell me to get out of his office politely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is that what Nelson did? Was was Nelson a? a well, Nel of... Nelson was a tight end that became a long snapper, so okay. I think that conversation would go a little bit differently. But okay. if you remember before, I was fourth string wide receiver in JV, <laughs> so that might be a tougher conversation. I will say, obviously, since high school, I've developed a little bit more athleticism. But, um, yeah, I mean, uh, one way, like, one thing I kind of learned, like, growing into long snapping was uh, there's a difference between fast and quick. Like, a 300-pound guy can play ping pong really well, but he won't be able to play tennis, right? So I have to be as quick as possible getting my hands and torso through uh, my legs to snap. Um, and then – it's really cool to see because when you watch some of these like older snappers I, and I say older, I'm talking guys probably like at, at least eight years in when they, when their bodies start to like, sorry, uh, visibly slow down their footwork, you watch it and you watch it compared to like some of the rookies or like myself when I was younger, it's like my footwork is like, like boom, so fast their footwork. They kind of just float. And they're just there because they they know it, they've seen it, they know how to move. Um, kind of an example is like me going fast was like in uh, I was with the Packers and the assistant special teams coach was like, dude, like you can't react because you're holding your breath and you're like tensed up when you like get up to block. You're like like that. He's like, next time you snap, just take one exhale as you get into your stance and like just feel how it. And I, again, I just kind of was gliding to the side I needed to go. And it helped because like, I wasn't tense. Like my eyes weren't shaking like this. Like I was just, it was more like a, like if you put like a, a camera on like a steady cam, it was just way more calm and, and focused and I could react a little bit better. Um, so I, there's just a million different things that any guy can do to improve as a long snapper and then tackling in space. Um, I'm really excited because our new special teams coordinator has, really really helped me um with tackling in space uh general just athleticism and then you know he's having me doing um some of the, like the, the kickoff drills kickoff return drills i'm never going to be on those teams but there's techniques of guys going down the field kind of like stutter steps different things you know going off the backside if you can like cut underneath and flatten enough like stuff that just hasn't been taught to me yet uh, for whatever reason. Um, I am super, super excited to see how it translates to uh, in a game. 49ers have put a lot of resources into special teams in the off season. More with Tabor Pepper, 49ers long snapper coming up. I want to ask about uh, the outlook of the 2022 season for those San Francisco 49ers for the team as a whole and the special teams. But I've got to let the folks out there know about our friends at Built Bar. From the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the latest gift to your taste buds. Uh, you've got to try the amazing coconut brownie chunk bar. But guess what? They've also added the coconut brownie chunk puff to the mix. So they got the, the traditional 
coconut brownie chunk flavor of Built Bar and the Puff. Croc is a Puff guy. I'm a traditional Built Bar guy, but whatever kind of bar you like, you can find tons of great flavors of Built Bars at Built.com. And the key is they are high in protein, but low in calorie, low in sugar, and all the way delicious. And most Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. So you really feel like you're getting a treat and you can feel good about reaching for that built bar. We're talking about 130 to 150 calories in most built bars, 17 grams of protein, only four or five grams of sugar. So don't sacrifice flavor when you're trying to eat healthy coconut brownie chunk. Peanut butter is my favorite. Uh, Croc, what's your favorite flavor of puff? Is it the uh, is it the pie, the, the key lime pie? Is that oh, what it's, it the, it's the birthday cake. Oh, oh, we had a, that's right. The birthday cake came out and that knocked everybody down a peg yeah. on Croc's big board of Built Bar flavors. You can get your own box of Built Bars, whatever flavor you like, or a mixed box at Built.com right now. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. That is promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. All right. The... The 49ers this year, they did put some resources into special teams. And we talked about, you know, there's been a lot of changes on the coaching staff as well. What does that make you feel like when you are a special teamer, seeing that your front office is going out and, and putting resources and, and taking special teams very seriously? And especially with the, we saw the way the season ended for a team like the Packers, where the 49ers maybe for sure, actually, it's not a maybe, wouldn't have advanced to the NFC championship game is it, if it wasn't for beating the other team in special teams. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm not going to lie, like when I saw some of our, some of the guys leave in free agency this year, you can't help but to get a little nervous, especially when they're the quality of people like K1, Lakin, DJ, Jones. Um, those are some of my favorite guys, like, it, like DJ. So when I'm sitting in my locker, Nick is on my left and then to his left is DJ. And then to his left was Lakin and like, Dude, it was the best time at our lockers because they were just such great guys. They were so funny, loved football, passionate, great leaders. Like it, I was like freaked out to see those guys go. Um, but I'm so glad they got their money. In rebuttal to that, um, since the Niners went out and got got those special teams guys, like you were talking about, and since OTAs, like I, I really don't know. I mean, I've only done a couple OTAs uh, just because of how crazy my journey is, but. Our locker room is already seems like a 10 out of 10 um, with the guys we brought in. Um, Toure, Oren Burks, Mooney, Odom. Like these guys are, they're awesome. They love football. They're quality guys. Like George and I, uh, George Odom and I have like really bonded over. He, he just, uh, bred like two of his German shepherds like that's something I'm pretty passionate about like he and I talk about that all the time like they like it's awesome because those guys are ballers like Oren Burks is going into the special teams room and watching film with with coach Schneider and, and Robbie and the assistants um <laughs> every clip of Burks is like clinic film it's wow. ridiculous like his body posture, his hands, his head, he's like calm in his movements. His footwork is so crisp. It's like you show him one time and it's perfect. Like, I love that we went out and got these guys. Like, I'm so excited to see them on the field. Like, I, I can't wait. Like, I don't want to sit through these preseason games because I want to get to the real deal. Because, and especially with Schneider and the way he coaches, um, you know, he has a long resume with Seattle and, you know, watch their special teams you don't really have to see the rankings like watch how they play they are so damn fast and physical i mean that's our motto is fast and physical and it's true because his entire philosophy is just go 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 like the next man up is is going to finish the play like don't worry if you make a mistake it's awesome i'm so excited yeah I love the way you talked about Burks. I, I think when I was with the Jets, they talked about me like in the opposite way. And that was why it just <laughs> like, guys, can't wait for this guy to get off of the field. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, spe special teams is important. I wish I could go to like these like powered uh, five schools and kind of shake some of those pretty good receivers, pretty good linebackers and be like, if you're not projected in the first round, 
you need to beg your coach to put you on special teams because that's going to boost your draft stock more than two or three more touchdowns on the season. Like, I really don't think these guys have a grasp of how important it is because on the cutting room floor, when they're talking about so-and-so and so-and-so, nine times out of 10, it comes down to special teams. Can we use this guy on, on special teams? Okay, if our starter gets hurt, we bring him up. He's the third guy on the roster for game day. Are we going to fit him in on the L2 on kickoff? Like, is he plug and play? Can he go to L2? Can he do L2, L3, L4? Or can he do 2, 3, 4, R2, 3, 4? Like, if you can plug and play in all these different places, it, it, it helps your stock so much. And I just watched the film, and I just wish I could shake some of these guys and just really get it through their head. Yeah, prima donnas like young Eric Crocker don't take special teams. <laughs> he, does have, he does have an arena bowl ring though, so he's got that. He's got the hardware. Uh, I just saw some some highlights of Croc picking balls off the other day uh, in his arena bowl days, so or his arena my, league days. My, so that was fun my to watch. dad played arena when he was like 32 after he hung up his cleats. I was like four or five, and he decided to play for the Peoria Pirates. Yes. Yeah, I, was... I sucked on special teams in the arena league too, and <laughs> I think I got one of the coaches fired. Like, listen, dude, they they they, they have you as a like, I'm, you know, okay, I had decent size, 6'2", 200 pounds, but they have me blocking these big guys that are running full speed at me that are like six four, two hundred and fifty five pounds that ran a four five, and it's like, <laughs> how am I supposed to block this guy? And you know, I get back set up, and I'm, I'm trying hard. I promise, I'm trying hard. And I just could not get it right. And I was looking at my coach and it's like, man, I feel bad. He's getting chewed out. I'm sucking. And it's like, dude, I'm, I'm trying. I promise. It happens. It <laughs> happens. Is that the most difficult part is trying to cover a punt now that you've got the long snapping thing down like that? You're a machine, right? But then now it's like, OK, now I'm in space. I got to be an athlete. Is that more difficult than the snapping part? Uh, the blocking is the hardest part by okay. far. Um, <clears throat> I'd say sometimes my philosophy when I'm covering punts is just don't get like crossed up basically just, yeah but when I, when I am going down there i get down there pretty quick so if i am one of those kind of first one or two guys down there depending on how they defended our gunners um i know the direction of the punt and i know which way we're sending our guys so if it's if i'm the first guy and the punt is kind of towards the middle of the field, I'll try to cut off the side where we're not really covering just to force them to the boundary. Um, so that's kind of my main priority because chances are I'm not going to be able to take a shot. Um, it's just not one of my strong suits. But uh, last year I was disappointed. I, I don't think I had any tackles. But each most, I think, I had like one with the Packers, a couple with the Dolphins, and then a couple in 2020. But um, – yeah, I'm excited to play in our in our scheme this year because it's I think it's very conducive to multiple guys getting in on tackles. Last one for you, Tabor, before we let you go. We appreciate you giving us some time today, giving us some insight on what it's like to be a special team or a long snapper in the NFL. Uh, just the team as a whole. How good are the San Francisco 49ers in 2022? I, I know it's one thing to have Super Bowl aspirations, but do you guys in the locker room have Super Bowl expectations? Yeah, I mean, um, Going through OTAs, kind of the focus is getting back into the swing of things, getting back in the playbooks, and bringing up the younger guys. That's like a really, really big focus. And I think I think that's a sign of a really good team is understanding that it's it starts from your rookies, really, um, because that's going to be the foundation that the team continues to like grow. You know, you want a strong foundation. Um, so, yeah, I mean – there's a lot of guys returning. There's some new guys that have some like really awesome skill sets. Again, like uh, Kamiko Ture is like super exciting to watch. Um, Jordan Willis is back. Like Ken Law's back. Like I'm so excited to see Ken Law in action. He looks so good, man. Like he's he's lost a little bit of weight, and he's you've seen the videos on Instagram. Yeah, he's moving. So with the boxing workout, he he did look like he was uh, in about as good a shape. Kind of scary shape. You know. Yeah, and I gotta say, there's there's some guys who decided to stay in Santa Clara um, for the off season, and uh, um, Javon being one of them. There's a different air about him too, in terms of ownership of being a part of the team, being a team guy, and like, you know, uh, Javon's one of those guys now who 
he we can't walk past each other without like dapping each other up and saying what's up and like that's that's super important um robbie was talking about trey uh earlier today i think it got released today um about how he's already stepped into a leadership role i mean the second we were back for otas like he has that air about him that you know he's an awesome leader and he wants to see everybody do well and it, it takes a village. It, it's a team sport. And like the faster and tighter, like you can grow as, as a team, like it, it's just, it signifies like it, we can only go up from here because you're not going to be on the team if you're not talented. And now really the part is just cohesion and working together and optimizing everything. Hey, Tabor, I know Peacock said that that was the last question, but this is the last one. I promise. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what kind of leader is Kyle Shanahan? Because he comes off almost as two two different type of people. It's like he's like this kind of young, cool, hip coach. But then on the other hand, there's kind of this hard ass side to him a little bit that can be a little cutthroat. So when you you know converse with Kyle Shanahan or you talk to him or you just see him interact, what type of leader do you think he is? Um, he's an awesome leader because he understands the he understands that the team that he's built has i feel like one of the best mixes of like old vets i mean how long has been how long has trent been playing 14 years yeah. 14 15 yeah something like um that. george okay. now george now has when he got drafted 2017 he's going into his sixth year then i guess like he lets the pros be pros and he expects the pros, again, to lift the rookies up and teach them the way of the world um, in the NFL. And that's that's what happened to me when I got there. You know, I was still a kid for all intents and purposes when I, when I signed with San Francisco. I didn't have a whole lot of guidance, to be honest, because of how much I bounced around. Robbie took, it, took me under his wing. And it, it starts from those guys, but it starts from Kyle and John, top down. Um, and I would say that him letting us be professionals is like probably one of his strongest suits um, as a coach. Um, but I don't think you can be a coach without being able to rip into some guys. So it's not a common occurrence, but uh, yeah, he's, he's an awesome guy. I, I love Kyle as a coach again, because he, he lets us be pros, um, but he'll let us know if day to day, if we're, if we're up to the standard or if we're not, he won't yeah. mince words. Yeah, fantastic stuff, Tabor. I'm glad you didn't give up on your dream and you kept at it after all the uh, all the workouts. And the I, I read the story about you getting called at the airport, and the the team told you not to get on the flight. I mean, that's demoralizing. Uh, it's amazing. Gosh. Let me let me grab some. Hold on, I got something. Yeah. That. <laughs> hey, that yeah, is some, that's rough. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. They must have that. found out that they were going to be signing someone else. Yeah, there was an injury. Okay. There was an oh. injury at practice. This was my boarding pass. You to framed that it. I love my, that. My mom framed it after it happened and uh, put the definition of perseverance underneath it. Wow, that's nice. Um, that's amazing. I love that. Super, super, super important to me. Um, yeah, this was kind of like, I don't know, like an inception. He had like the top. This was kind of my thing I went back to if I needed a little bit of encouragement. That is fantastic. Awesome stuff. Tabor, I really appreciate you giving us some time today. Uh, you guys can find Tabor on Twitter at Tabor Snapping. And you're doing the Twitch thing too, Tabor? Do you want to tell the folks where to find you? Oh, yeah. Uh, all my social, Instagram, Twitch, uh, Twitter, everything is Tabor Snapping. Um, and I've decided, you know, I guess gamers kind of attach my brand. But I looked through my socials last week and I was like, I don't see any gaming content. So, um Football comes first, but when I do relax and play some video games with my friends, just expect some content on there. Um, just trying to extend my reach to, to different communities. Absolutely. Fantastic stuff. Thanks, everybody, for making Locked On 49ers your first listen. I know everyone's pumped for the 2022 season and to watch uh, Tabor and the crew get after it. Training camp is so close. Croc and I got you covered here every day. Thanks again to Tabor Pepper for joining us on the show. Croc and I back tomorrow. Locked on 49ers.